support by Norda Real Estate Investments, Miami's housing market is 37.3% below our region's historical average. Simply put, we don't have enough housing. So how do we create more living space? Well, there's a new solution that's slowly making its way through Miami-Dade County, and it starts with shopping malls. This is Sunset Place. Since it opened in 1999, it was known as a bustling mall off South Dixie Highway and Red Road, offering food, dining, and fun. But now, it's desolate, a virtually empty building with no foot traffic. It's no longer we're going to depend on just retail outlets to bring people. We need more things to come into the community. Brian Gorita has worked in the real estate industry for five years with over 20,000 followers on Instagram and shares his insight on all new real estate ventures and changes happening in Miami. Now there's currently plans in the works to resuscitate this mall and make it the epicenter of South Miami. He's been staying up to date on all the latest shopping mall redevelopments, including this one. From my understanding, they're still working out and fine tuning what the overall project was going to look like. So we're going to get developments overall, but the current government has made it very, very clear that they want to redevelop this. This mall currently is an eyesore and there's so much potential. According to Midtown Equities, they are the developers of the project. I reached out multiple times for comment, but did not receive a response. But information on what the projects could look like are still in the works. The city of South Miami says they are waiting on the developers to submit their plans to the city, but they are anticipating mixed use residential and food and beverage offerings, meaning their space will be converted for residential use. Going south to Cutler Bay, there's another project. Southland Mall already being redeveloped into South Place City Center. What's now a construction site will soon be converted into 4,000 residential units, 500,000 square feet of retail, 150,000 square feet of food and beverage options, a 150 key hotel, 60,000 square feet of medical office space, and an amphitheater. According to the Town of Cutler Bay website, the site will be completed by 2029, with the first rental properties being available in early 2025, creating roughly 2,700 new jobs. If you're a resident living down south, why do you have to drive hours and hours just to go to Brick or Wynwood when you can have those same high quality amenities and attractions in your location? This move from sole retail spaces to mixed use buildings is expected to be the future. This is happening because there is a huge demand for this. People want to work, live, and play all in the same place, and they want to make it so that the community is involved. According to Forbes, the Urban Land Institute and National Multifamily Housing Council Research Foundation estimates that there is 1 billion square feet of obsolete retail in the U.S. In an analysis done by JLL of 135 mall redevelopment projects in the country, over 50 percent include housing. But these shopping malls aren't just becoming residential spaces. 85% of the projects in the analysis will retain retail on site. But why could a mall flip be a good move? A lot of those shopping malls are in areas that are of high traffic and they're in demand, so they're well located. Dr. Eli Baraja is the director of Hollows School of Real Estate at Florida International University. He explains that because of the rise of online shopping, brick and mortar malls will soon become fewer and fewer. While the empty lots might be considered for mixed use space because of their prime location, putting the idea into action isn't that simple. But you have to remember that this is not that we are taking the space and we are changing the inside. In many cases, you knock the space altogether and you rebuild from zero. It is extremely, extremely difficult to convert a shopping mall into residential space by just altering the space. Same thing with office space. I mean, the configuration, the way that the electricity flows, the way that uh, water, sewage, etc. It's just not suitable for residential real estate in its current state. So in many cases, you need a complete rebuild it's not an alteration of the space. The site plans for these projects are trying to incentivize Miami residents by promising a mini city or destination, phrases that advertise a mini metropolis just steps away. Some sites like Palms at Town & Country are doing just that, recently announcing they are turning the Coles building into 12-story apartment buildings. For now, in order to meet the needs of the community, we're going to have to go up. And that's the only option right now, especially for a city that's growing. Is this a bad thing or a good thing? I don't think it's bad or good. I just think this is a new iteration that Miami is destined to become. We have to be prepared for it. Garita explains that lack of housing has been a continuous issue in Miami-Dade County, and malls might be the only creative solution to use land we already have. Unfortunately, Miami has an issue when it comes to 
the availability of land. We're pretty much landlocked. You have the west Everglades, you have the east, you have the beach, and down south you have pretty much the Keys, and there's not enough of it available real estate for people to develop. And this is why you're seeing malls like this that become habitats to sustain populations that become work centers and live centers and just everything. The big question is how much will these rental units and apartments be? You got to put yourself in the shoes of the developer. If you're buying in a high-priced area, you need to make margin and you make your ROI back. So in those areas, you're still going to see high-end luxury rental units that are going to come. Now, of course, there are incentives, for example, the Live Local Act, which allows developers and local leaders to rezone industrial zoned areas, malls, so you can increase density and create more workforce housing and more affordable housing for residents. But unfortunately, but what I've been seeing here, we're gonna see a lot more rental communities and a lot of these are gonna be for rent. So will these reimagined malls be the promise of more to come? Baraja says it could be a fad for the entire U.S. Whatever square footage we have for retail 10 years ago, we will not need the same square footage for retail 10 years from now. Uh, you can look at it uh, in a way as a winner takes it all in the retail space. So the really good shopping malls, shopping centers will do really well because that's where everybody will go. And those that are not doing well will still be converted, will, will simply be converted, either completely converted or a portion of the site. But what about Miami-Dade County? I think that Miami is going into a new renaissance. Many people are telling me that this is going to become a New York, and I think they're on the money, but I think Miami's not going to be a New York. It's going to be something completely of its own. I think residents just need to be aware of that. The changes here, we've had a walk migration, and it's not going to stop. And the reality of it is, unfortunately, that adaptation needs to happen. For more information on this story and others, you can visit our website, NBCMiami.com. Sophia Hernandez, NBC6 News.